about 31, I had a question coming out of section 8.1, number 61. And here we were asked to find the area of an ellipse. And the area formula for an ellipse, it's not too bad in and of itself. It's a times b times pi. And if I look at this equation, I have an ellipse. And I'll, I'll actually tell you, technically I have a circle. And the reason I can say that is because I can see, ooh, let me change colors here. I can see two squared terms. I see an x squared and a y squared. All right, another thing to take note of is they both have positive coefficients in front of it, uh, in front of those terms. So like this is technically positive nine squared and you can see the plus sign here. But why I actually know it's a circle and not an ellipse is because they're both nines here. This is actually technically gonna be a circle and you're gonna say, okay, well, I know the circle formula is area equals pi r squared. Well, we're about to see that because in a moment, I'm gonna show you that a and b are the same number and they're both going to be 3. So this is going to be a pi r squared situation because this will literally be 3 times 3 times pi, which was pi times 3 squared. And 3 is going to be our radius. But how we get there, that's a little bit more fun. So I gave you this thing in standard form, right? Or I, I don't know if you want to call it standard form. I, I technically call it standard form, but I think your, your book calls it... Um, I, I think they use standard form for when we get down to this for this part. Um, but anyways, what I want to do, how about this? I want to get it into graphing form. So I want to get it of the form x minus h over a squared plus y minus k over b squared equals 1. All right, that's what I'd like to do. And I need to complete a square for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lump the x terms together and I'm going to lump the y terms together. So that's what you see me doing. Let me put a little space there. I'm doing that at this step. And I need to complete the square. And before I complete a square, you need to factor out whatever these lead coefficients are. So completing the square only works when your lead coefficient is 1. So we need to get our, our um, equation, or at least our expression on the left side of that equation. Um, we need that, that perfect square, tri or not perfect square, we need that trinomial. And when I say trinomial, there's going to be three terms here. We need the, the lead coefficient in that trinomial to be 1. So we factor out those numbers. That's great. And then when it comes to completing the square, it's always half of the coefficient in front of the linear term, which in this case would be negative 3, and then square it, right? Half the coefficient in the linear term, and then square it. But you need to balance that out by adding a number to the right side of the equation. And we don't want to just say, let's add 9 and then add 9, because technically each of those 9s are getting multiplied by 9. So what I really need to do to balance is add 81 twice. And that's what you see me doing right here. So once I get going with that, on the right side of my equation, it simplifies to 81. These become those perfect squared trinomials, right? x minus 3 squared and y minus 3 squared. And then what I really want to do, and let me, let me erase my work here, and just keep in mind I'm, I'm right now at this level. I would like this number on the right side to be 1, and the way I do that is I divide every term by 81, all right? And then I have a little canceling that's happening, leaves me with 9s on the denominator. This is going to simplify to 1, and there we go. So I can see here that A is equal to B is equal to 3, and again, when A and B are equal, I just want to emphasize here, you've got a circle, all right? And so if I wanted to, again, if I thought of it as pi r squared, the radius is 3, that's pi times 3 squared, which is 9 pi, or, whoa, if I go back to that formula that they gave me, I'll just plug in a b pi, and in this case, a times b times pi is 3 times 3 times pi, still get 9 pi. And there's the area of my ellipse, or technically the area of my circle. All right, thanks so much. Bye.